Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to make a backup image of your Windows system drive and then also how to restore it so that way uh, you could actually make multiple images if you want to have backups of you know certain cases where you've made a major change and you want to have a backup image just in case you need to roll back to it. Uh, so we're going to be using the free Macroom Reflect software. There's a free version which will do this just fine. And so we have our primary Windows hard drive here with our primary partitions you know, separate Windows partitions that it makes when, and when it installs it. And then we have our backup drive here, which is 120 gigs. And this correlates to this here. So our C drive, which is 100 gigs. This one here, backup drive, which is 120 gigs, even though we're not using all the C drive. So uh, this, this particular computer, the drive numbers are a little off here if we're... Windows is disk 2 and the backup's disk 1. Normally Windows will be your first one. So sometimes when you add and remove hard drives, it kind of gets the numbering system out of whack there. So make sure you're doing your Windows drive, which is, should be obvious because it has the little Windows icons by it here. Okay, so there's two options here. Um, you, could, you could pick a clone this disk or image this disk from here, or you could go to the backup option. So there's image selected disk and backup Windows. So from what I've seen, I've tried them both. They both seem to do the same thing. Uh, they make image files. So we'll just say backup windows for this case here. Okay, so it's going to pick the drive here. Automatically windows. But if you were to do image selected disks, then it could give you an option which one you want to image. So that's probably the, the main difference there. You just have to make sure you pick the right one. You know, Obviously not both of them because one's the destination. So we'll do the uh, backup windows and pick a folder. You could browse to it if you want, or you could go right to the drive itself, like so, and you could give it a name, or whatever you want to call it. Click on Next. And then you have uh, templates. If you're going to do multiple backups, if you want to do, you know, differential incremental, that kind of thing. Uh, schedule it. Uh, change your retention rules, how long it's going to keep it. But we're just going to do a one-time backup, so we're not going to play around with this. But you could do so if you want to make these changes. You have some advanced options here for compression, file size, assign a password to it, uh, verifying it, comments, shutdown, so on. Okay, so we're going to click on Next. So here's our summary here with our options that we chose. No schedule, our retention, and you can get to the options here again. We'll click on Finish, and then we don't, we're not going to save as a backup definition file since it's just a one-time thing. So we're going to do the Run Backup Now and click OK. Okay, so that's started. So obviously this will take some time. So we'll be back when this is completed. Okay, so our backup is complete. Took eight, eight minutes or so. All right, so now if we go back to our backup drive, so here's our image. Here's the name I gave it Windows and it adds its old own information to it there. Okay, so now we're going to restore it. So let's uh, make a little change here. Uh, let's see. So this is a file we made here. So after we restore, this file should not be there because we're restoring to a point before that file was made. Okay, so now we're going to go to Restore. Well, before we do that, we can explore an image. So pick the, make sure you pick the one that has your actual files on it. So this is the bigger one here. So it's going to mount it as F. You could change it. Okay, so we could actually browse the uh, image backup and, you know, work with it from there. So I just want to show you that real quick. Then when, when you're done, you could just go to that drive and made, right-click it. Macroom Reflect, Unmount Image. So that's gone. All right, so now we're going to do the Restore. Browse for an image or backup to restore. Back up. Okay, so there's our image right there, Windows. Just click on Restore. So now the source 
and then the destination. Everything looks good there. You could pick a different target disk if you were going to do that. Okay, here's a summary of what it's going to do. Click on Finish. Now it says, Restore must be completed in the Windows PE Rescue environment because you can't restore it while Windows is running, obviously. Do you want to build Rescue Media and add a boot menu now to automatically restore? Click Yes. So this will take some time, so we'll be pausing this as well. Okay, so now we're going to have to uh, reboot here to let the restore complete. And then you have an option here, what you want to do after the restore. We'll just set it to not set so we can show you uh, when it's finished here. So we'll click on Run from Windows PE to restart the computer. All right, so it's loading up here. Okay, automatic restore is about to start. Okay, so now it's going through the process of uh, restoring the image. So we'll pause the video again and then be back when this is finished because this takes even longer than the uh, making the image when you restore it. Okay, so the restore is complete and since I chose to not take any action such as reboot, uh, we're just stuck here. So if you click on close, and then it'll take you back to your uh, backup here. And then like, all you have to do, click on the X, and it should reboot for you. Okay, you can see we're back in Windows and we have our old uh, image restored here. And you can see that text file I made that was um, created after the image was created is not here, meaning this is the real backup image and not the uh, way it was before we uh, did the backup or the restore, I should say. So I will put a link in the description for the uh, software. You could download it. Um, it's going to ask you to put in your email address so it can send you a registration code, I believe. So that way... Uh, You'll be able to enter the code in when you do the installation. And then you get to try it out for yourself and do some backups. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.